Growing old is something that is simultaneously very simple and also confusing. You know, we just kind of take it for granted that everything will grow old and die, but as is the case with any biological mechanism, it has to have a cause. You know, this has to be written into our genetic code or somehow built into the system for it to happen. And if you think about this from an evolutionary perspective, you know, why do people grow old and eventually die? The only real answer it can provide is that we need to make room for the next generation to thrive. And that actually does make a lot of sense if you think about it, you know. Evolution requires new generations to be born, and we need to make room for those new generations to grow and to have their own babies and so on. So death, in that manner of speaking, growing old and eventually dying, it's just kind of a, a byproduct of how evolution works. But exactly what those biological mechanisms are, exactly how people grow old and why people grow old has still been the sub subject of a lot of debate. You know, we, we've done a lot of research on it and we're still doing a lot of research on it. And the theories we've developed fall into two basic categories, the damage and error theories and the programmed theories of aging. So those damaged and error theories of aging, those are the ones that are typically the most common. You know, if you talk to just an average person about the subject, this is probably what they'll say about it. So the whole idea here is that growing old is just the result of cumulative mistakes. You know, you, you just accumulate a whole lot of mistakes over the lifetime, and those biological mistakes start to take a toll in late life. But this, these kinds of theories come in many different forms. So you've got like wear and tear theories, you've got the rate of living theory, cross-linking theory, free radical theory, and the somatic DNA damage theory. So I just briefly wanted to introduce you to these. So the wear and tear theory, this is the simplest one. You know, this is the one that you could easily explain and most people would agree on. The whole idea here is that each individual cell in your body and you know, entire organs, entire, you know, networks of cells, they will start to malfunction simply because they're being used. So after extended use, they start to break down just like any machine would. The parts just don't work like they used to. They're, be they're becoming progressively damaged over time. And then there's the rate of living theories. The idea here is that the body can only process so much energy during your lifetime. You know, you might hear some people say things like, you know, your heart's only going to beat 2.21 billion times in your life. Uh, that's obviously not accurate, but that's kind of the idea. You know, you only have so much energy to spend in your life. And when that energy is spent, your body just stops working, to put it simply. Now, there is some scientific research to support this idea, though. It's what we found is that lifespan is actually linked to your metabolism. Like we've done a series of studies where we took different lab animals like rats and s some of the rats we've given them all the food they need to be happy and healthy and the other rats the experimental rats we would half starve them so that they're always not getting enough you know we give them enough so that they can survive but not enough so that they can feel satisfied so yeah these rats were like half starved their whole life and what we found is that the half-starved rats actually live longer. So there might be something to this idea that conserving energy and reducing your caloric intake can actually increase your lifespan. But what kind of life is that? You know, who wants to live a, a long, miserable life of, you know, half-starvation, basically, when you could live a shorter life that would be far more enjoyable? It's. I guess it's up to you to decide, but honestly, I would not want to live like, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge. That does not sound like a good idea. Uh, the next one in the wear and tear theories is the cross-linking theory. The whole idea here is that aging is the consequence of increased muscular stiffness due to the formation of cross-links. Cross-links refer to when these various proteins just 
interact randomly in our bodies and they produce a molecule inside our muscles that makes them stiffer and makes them less capable of doing their job. Like just think of like a whole bunch of bungee cords or a whole bunch of rubber bands or something. Like if you, if you hold all the rubber bands and you stretch them out, they'll expand and contract freely. But now imagine you tied it tightly on like the center and then you try to pull it after you tie all the rubber bands together. You'll find it's not so easy. Uh, you can test this yourself if you want to see what I'm talking about. But when you connect those stretchy bands together, they can't do their job as well. And that's exactly what this cross-linking theory is about. You know, when you connect the stretchy bands in your muscles, they can't expand and contract as well as they used to. And the primary source of these kinds of linkages seems to be collagen. Then there's the free radical theory. The whole idea of this one is that aging is the result of accumulating cellular damage due to the presence of free radicals. You've probably heard of this kind of stuff before. Uh, free radicals, these are these highly reactive chemicals that are produced randomly in normal metabolism. And when the free radicals just happen to interact with uh, nearby molecules, they will do damage. It's kind of like, uh, imagine the free radical is like uh, a meteor and it just, if it gets too close to one of these uh, cells, it'll just blow a hole right through it. You know, like these things are always flying around and if they just happen to hit a cell, they'll knock a hole right through it. And that could kill the cell or do irreversible damage to it. Uh, the reason why I say you've probably heard of this one before is because we talk a lot about antioxidants nowadays, it seems. You know, antioxidants, things like vitamins A and C and E, they can help to prevent the formation of free radicals during metabolism. But you don't need to worry about taking any fancy supplements or pills for antioxidants. Just, just you know, have a carrot, have a have an orange or a banana sometimes, it's fine. You don't have to do anything crazy. <clears throat> then there's the somatic DNA damage theory. And this one I think is particularly interesting. The, the whole idea here is that whenever your cells reproduce, you know, when, when you're growing new skin cells or whatever, when your cells reproduce, they make a copy of their DNA. That's how all cellular reproduction works. It always has to make a copy of its DNA. And every time you copy DNA, mutations will occur. And the whole idea of this theory is that over the lifetime, those mutations accumulate. You know, what started off as just a benign little mutation, nobody's ever going to notice it. It just kind of gets exaggerated more and more over time, so that by the time you reach old age, the mutations are so severe and so disabling that they'll actually start shutting parts of your body down. So this, this accumulating genetic mutation is what we think of when we talk about old age. And certain things can accelerate this mutation, such as the exposure to toxins and radiation, the, the sun, you know. There's a lot of things in the environment that can speed up the rate of this mutation. So those are the wear and tear theories. And as you can see, they take many different forms. But the basic idea is that, you know, as you get older, your body just takes a toll. Just by existing in the natural world, your body is progressively under attack. And it starts to really slow you down once you reach old age. Then there's the other kind of theories, the programmed theories of aging. These theories argue that growing old is actually the result of a predetermined plan so these changes are predetermined, meaning that if we could somehow, you know, figure out how to read your biology more accurately, then we could actually figure out how long your lifespan is going to be. These are pretty neat ideas, in my opinion. And theories, these program theories include uh, program, program longevity theory, telomere theory, endocrine theory, and the immunological theory. <clears throat> so program longevity is exactly what you would expect. The whole idea here is that aging is just written into your genetic code. So an organism has a part of its genetic code that determines how long its life will be. 
And ba based on what we've learned about ge genetics, this seems likely. But we don't know all there is to know about genetics just yet. So we can't say for sur certain that your lifespan is written into your genes, but it seems likely. But exactly how it manifests in the genes, that's also something we don't fully uh, understand. Like, it could be that what's written into your genes is actually uh, mediates the rate of wear and tear, for example. Like, maybe uh, what we find in your DNA shows us how quickly your body is going to be damaged and eventually parts of it will be destroyed by free radicals or how quickly f cross links will form, you know, that kind of stuff. But however it's manifested into your DNA, the whole idea here is that if we could read your genetic code, we would know how long you're going to live. And then there's the telomere theory. This once again goes to the genetic code, but now instead of just, you know, reading a part of the genes, we're actually looking at the ends. The ends of all your uh, genes are what we, or the ends of all your DNA strands are called telomeres. And aging is the result of a shortening of those telomeres. So tips are your chromosomes that play a major role in aging by adjusting the, the cell's response to stress and growth stimulation and stuff like that. So as, as you get older and cells reproduce, the telomeres get shorter and shorter. And then once the telomere has completely been uh, you know, wiped away, the cell will no longer reproduce, and then we start to see the effects of aging kick in. Now, the interesting thing about this telomere theory is that it has a lot of scientific support. And there's actually been some tests done to see if this can be used to lengthen lifespan. And that has shown some benefit. So, in a sense, you know, if we can slow down the shortening of these telomeres, we should be able to add years to your life. And that's exactly what telomerase can do. Telomerase is a naturally occurring enzyme that allows the telomeres to maintain their length. So what these researchers have done is just basically given people telomerase replacement therapy, uh, effectively lengthening their life. So this is extremely interesting in my opinion. This, this sounds a lot like a fountain of youth kind of stuff to me. <clears throat> then there's the endocrine theory. The whole idea here is that you have glands. You know, you have like a biological clock working through hormones to control the pace of your aging. And as a person grows older, their endocrine system just starts to perform less efficiently. And those chemical signals it's no longer sending out, that's... That's what aging is the result of. And the reduced efficiency of your endocrine glands uh, can be accelerated by things like stress and infections and things like that. <clears throat> then finally, there's the immunological theory. And this one can be explained pretty simply. It's just the whole idea here is as you grow older, as you move into old age, your immune system just gradually starts to shut itself off. So as you grow older, you're just more susceptible to a wide range of diseases, making your body progressively more weak and frail and more susceptible to life-threatening disease. So regardless of the exact like biological mechanism of aging, it is obvious that this is a biological process. You know, the, the human body is like a biological machine. And like any machine, if we could figure out how exactly it works, we can optimize it. We can make it, you know, last longer. We can improve efficiency. We could potentially find a cure for old age. This, this is not sci-fi. This is what we're actually doing right now in these fields of science. But in order to do something like that, we just need to figure out how the system works in the first place. 